don't go there. Let's talk a little bit about Northern Lights photography, okay? Sure, let's sit here. Let's hope that we don't make this whole pile of wood collapse. Oh, hi there, I didn't almost notice you over there. So today I'm gonna talk with you a little bit about Northern Lights photography with Hugo the dog over here. I found this incredible old barn filled with, I guess, firewood or something. <sighs> what a location. So anyway, let's go straight into it. I have been doing now the last two nights Northern Lights photography here in Northern Finland. I actually have an, a video from last year about smartphone photography, doing Northern Lights with a smartphone. So that's not necessarily the best video out there, but there is some really great tips for that. If you're interested, I link it uh, on my left. So it's on your right over there. If you want to see that, that's there. But in this video, I will be talking about photographing Northern Lights with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera like my Sony over there. So before we talk about gear, I want to give you a few tips about uh, scouting Northern Lights. If you're filming Northern Lights, they usually appear in the north sky. So you want to check out where north is located. And a few places which work everywhere, good places to see Northern Lights or photograph them, are lakes and ocean bays and fields, all these places, uh, hills, all these places where you have a clear uh, sight, you know, towards north sky, those are the best ones. And you want to, you can find these from just looking a map, and you f want to find places where there is as little uh, city lights coming through as possible. So go as much out of you know city and all the street lights and all this stuff and very good places are like you know south uh, shores of lakes for example or uh, a field where you have a, a clear side towards north these are really excellent places and also uh, these i'm not sure what you call these but it's called niemi in finnish well, I'll, I'll write the English word over here. These places, uh, parts of land which stick uh, towards a waterfront, like a you know ocean or lake, which give you a really great access towards maybe even north and south and west or east. So these are really good. And I use an app called Aurora, I think which uh, gives me notifications every time the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights are like, you know, active. So every time uh, there's activity going on, uh, it gives me a notification and I know that, okay, now I maybe should get ready if I'm able to go out and, uh, you know, pack out my stuff. And, and also, of course, you want to check the forecast and see what the cloud coverage is. So obviously you're not going to be able to see them. Even if the uh, percentages are high to see Northern Lights, if there's a lot of clouds, you're not going to be able to see them. So check that out as well, so that you don't get uh, uh, you know, a bad trip. And, but not that kind of a bad trip. But uh, also if you are like uh, uh, you know, a tourist coming to a Northern country and you, you, you really want to see Northern Lights, don't be disappointed if you don't see them and don't be disappointed if they are not really that huge as you see in the pictures because they very rarely are that great really. They usually are uh, not just so uh, well visible with your bare eyesight, maybe in very very high up in Lapland and you know very high up in the no Norway maybe there is a lot better chance to see them that greatly. But like I said, don't be disappointed if they are not that huge or if you are only able to see them with a camera with a very long shutter speed. So that's very common. You have to be lucky to see them like all over the place or in the sky and going crazy and with all the colors. You have to be very lucky for that. And also uh, one tip concerning like let's say you come to Finland or, or Sweden or whatever 
and you're you're going like you go like oh man I wish I uh, could see the Northern Lights and uh, but I should travel to the very high up north to see them and I'm not going to be able to do that on, th on this trip. Well, uh, you can also see them if you get lucky on southern parts of Scandinavian countries and, and Finland. So it's possible, but you just have to have a very good view towards north and uh, as, as little uh, light pollution from cities as possible. And if you, even if you're not able to see them with your bare eyesight, there's a very good chance that if you use a long shutter speed on your camera, just point it towards north, and there's a very good uh, possibility that you're going to be like seeing at least a little bit of the green colors in the sky. But uh, yeah, those are my general tips. Then a few little hints about budget gear uh, when it comes to filming northern lights. So obviously you want to have a wide angle lens. So don't use a telezoom lens. Use something like 10 millimeter to 25. Don't go any more uh, up from that because even 24 millimeter, even with a full frame camera, is a little bit too tight. Uh, it might work if you want to take like this, kind of like not a close up, but kind of like this a little tighter uh, image with just the sky, then you might uh, get some really nice results with a 24 millimeter as well. But 28 millimeter is just, it's just way too tight. If you only have a 28, 28 millimeter, for example, don't give up, you can still go out and do, do your photography, but uh, it's just very hard to catch them with a so tight uh, angle of view. So I've been using right now a Samyang 24mm 2.8 lens on my Sony camera. That's pretty good. It's a, a little bit too tight for my taste, but it's a very good uh, budget, cheap lens. So uh, I actually, by the way, I have links for this stuff, at least some of them, in the description. So if you're interested, check them out. Uh, also for a Canon, I would recommend the 10 to 18 millimeter, I think the aperture is only four, but it's doable. You can get some pretty good results with that. I love the 10 millimeter uh, focal length. It works really well, even with crop sensors. And then I have actually this one over here, which I'm going to show to you. Uh, oh, here's the actually the 10 to 18 millimeter. Really, really good lens. Pretty cheap. So that's one of these budget lenses, which you might want to consider if you're using Canon. And then also for Canon users, but for Sony and other systems as well, if you are okay with manual focus, check out the Vintage FD lenses. For example, this one over here is a fish eye lens by Sigma. It's a 15 millimeter lens. And even though it's just 15, uh, the like the, angle of the view is crazy. It's like about 180 degrees and you can get really nice shots with this one if the uh, northern lights are really huge because if you have a clear uh, place where you are doing it there's no objects really uh, nearby you. You can point this like and if the northern lights are really like high up you can point this straight towards the sky and get really excellent images. So I've been testing this out lately. You can find these pretty cheap and uh, everything is manual. So it works with any system. You just have to get an adapter. They cost maybe 20 uh, bucks. So they are not really that expensive. Mm, they may, might be hard to find, but if you do some research, you are probably able to find some. But the photography itself is pretty simple when you have the right gear. Use a tripod. It makes it a lot easier. You have to have a steady uh, you know, like a steady tripod to have it have the camera so that it won't move at all. Use a two second timer so that when you press the trigger, you won't shake the camera at all. And um, if the northern lights are really big, don't use too long shutter speed. So, for example, I did last night and the night before uh, some photography with 1.6 and two second shutter speeds. Uh, I didn't even have to use that high ISO. I think it was like 3200 
So when the northern lights are very big, you don't have to go uh, that uh, lo long for the shutter, because if you use uh, with big um, northern lights, you know, very uh, colorful, uh, fast moving northern lights, long shutter speed, the northern lights are going to go kind of messy. So that's one thing you want to think about. But if they if they are like barely visible, then you can uh, put it up to 30 seconds or something even, you know, and take mm, very long shutter uh, speed images so that you get them like, um, uh, what? So that you can make them a lot more like visible in the image, you know. So try out different things. Uh, there's no rule really that you have to have these particular settings. No, we are almost finished. So you can just, you know, try out things and uh, yeah, it's pretty simple really. Just have a steady tripod and uh, there you go. And the post-processing, well, there are a lot of different schools for that. People do different things. I am myself the kind of guy who likes to go for the natural look. So I, I try not to go over the top with the editing of the pictures. It's very easy, especially with North... <laughs> no, don't. Now the demon comes out. Okay, relax, relax. Hey, Hugo, relax. I know you're frustrated, but we are almost done. So yeah, that's another topic really. But I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to... Hey say goodbye to the viewers. Feel free to comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. Bye bye.